Doctors today are dealing with much more than patient care. From higher overhead costs and stricter regulations to shifting models from reimbursement, making your medical practice successful is more challenging and varied than ever. And that can take a toll on the part of the job that many doctors care about most. I'm Adam Silati, and for the next three episodes of the eClinical Works podcast, we'll be exploring how the relationship with your patients may be affecting the health of your office. Is the doctor taking on too much responsibility? Are patients willing, even eager, to become fuller partners in their healthcare? How are offices working to make that happen? And what is this HELO thing? We'll define that for you and hear how clients view HELO as the key to empowering patients for their good health and to enjoy a stronger patient relationship. In 2012, the Physicians Foundation conducted a survey of over 100,000 American physicians. And 80% of those doctors said patient relationships are more satisfying than the financial rewards of their work. So if you were to ask a doctor, is there anything that's getting in the way of building that ideal patient relationship with your patients? Their response might be, yeah, the... The time crunch, you know, that comes from 15-minute appointment slots, which are more and more mandated in order to meet those financial requirements. That's Dr. Greg Hinson, a longtime family physician. And we wanted to get the provider's perspective on today's office dynamic. And in his opinion, that time crunch, in effect, is... Really ruining doctor-patient relationships. And when you consider that that relationship with a patient, the ability to communicate effectively with a patient, that's really a big part of the efficacy of any treatment. I mean, that is, patients are way more likely to get better if they believe and trust what their doctor tells them. So when you get shorter visits, it means you're more likely to give a prescription for a medication instead of one for behavioral change, like trying to lose a few pounds or walking regularly for exercise. And it definitely means patients are more likely to walk out frustrated or not completely understanding your instructions. As Dr. Hinson points out, a strong patient relationship is not just satisfying, but it's critical to successfully treating patients. Now that may seem obvious, but what used to be implicitly understood is now being brought into sharper focus as the medical industry puts more emphasis on care programs such as patient-centered medical home. Paying attention to patient relationships requires time, and time for the average medical office has become very expensive. The medical industry understands that old models are long overdue for change. Private insurance providers and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services are well aware that providers, especially those in primary care, are struggling with reimbursement. And to be honest, they probably recognize that a large portion of overall healthcare spending is comprised of redundant or unnecessary services that cut into insurance company profits, but there is good news. One solution seems to work for both providers and insurance companies. Payers have been launching more and more incentive programs that reward offices that take steps to provide quality care at a more affordable price. Now, who doesn't want a little extra money coming in? But when medical professionals say they can't afford to see fewer patients, are they really looking for more money? Or are they searching for something else? Now, it turns out that there's a resource central to this dilemma that is absolutely 100% finite. It's equally available to everyone, but it can be extremely hard to come by. Everyone knows the old saying, time is money. So if you find yourself short on money, but long on time, well, then you can spend that time making products or providing services and earn money in return. So the doctor's office sets up a schedule, fills it with patients, and theoretically our time and money problems should be solved. Most offices will tell you, however, that it's a bit more complex than that, and they're often required to see more patients than they would like. The irony is that by seeing more patients each day, physicians actually see less of each patient. So that means that the very thing that doctors and patients care about most, their relationship, gets less attention than it deserves. Any way you look at it, today's medical professionals are taking on an enormous amount of responsibility. Doctors and staff continue to care for patients amid stricter documentation requirements, changing technology, and falling reimbursements. But it can all be worth it if the patients would just listen and get better. Now, I'm 
joking, of course, it's not that simple, but that feeling does underscore how for far too long we viewed the doctor-patient relationship as rather one-sided. Patients were allowed to be casual spectators of their health while the doctor was expected to achieve results. And even when patients wanted to take a more active role, systems and attitudes often discouraged them. Now, all that's changing today, with patients encouraged and even expected to be more responsive, involved, and responsible in their own health care. And the result is more meaningful and fulfilling interactions in the office and through email, phone consultations, and even televisits. So where does the doctor's time go today? And given that we can't expand our days, how can we make better use of the hours we do have? So there's reviewing records and data from a patient. There's finding and reviewing records and data about a patient from other caregivers. There's the time you spend considering a patient's payer when choosing meds or ordering tests or obtaining prior authorization from that payer for the same. Uh, there's the obvious time that's spent uh, documenting visit notes, calls about inpatients or calls from colleagues and about referrals. You know, then we, we should spend time reviewing medical literature to stay current in our treatment plans and, you know, reviewing lab results, uh, the results of the test that you ordered and acting on them. So there's a lot that gets that has to be done as a part of uh, your day-to-day -day responsibilities. The provider's main job is to care for patients, so is it any surprise that much of the time that could be spent seeing patients is spent addressing tasks related to patient care? There are things like lab results to review, appointments to confirm, refills to authorize, documents to transfer, and phone calls. If you work in a medical office, you can probably hear the phones ringing in your ears even after you've left the office. Just listen to what these clients were going through. When we started with Patient Portal, we were getting over 500 phone calls a day. Well, basically, we were getting about 270 to 320 incoming calls. Uh, and most of these calls, about 65% of them are for the appointments, either to make it, change it, cancel it, things like that. Does that sound familiar? We could debate all day how we got to this status quo of what's become the modern doctor's office, but the reality will still be there. What I wanted to find out was, what can we do about it? How do we reverse the trend and regain that strong patient relationship in the process? I spoke with several clients who figured out just how to do this. It's not an impossible task, and if you're an eClinical Works client, all the tools you need are right at your fingertips. Among the people I spoke with, they all shared some common traits. These offices were able to spend all the time they wanted to build their patient relationships because they discovered how they could better manage patient expectations and patient access to their office in order to reduce their operating costs. And to do that, they used tools provided by Hilo. Hilo stands for Health and Online Wellness, and it's not just a website or an app. It's, it's much more than that. It's, it's really a patient engagement platform. It, it is meant to connect a physician to their patients in more and more meaningful ways. Uh, there is the app, the Hilo app, that's available on, for download. Uh, and this app for your patients is meant to take their experience with your portal, uh, enhance it and customize it, and put it in their hands on their smartphone. The statistic which began our episode indicated that the most satisfying aspect of practicing medicine is the patient relationship. That's the dream, a strong patient relationship and loads of time to build it. But what gets in the way is the worry that your day needs to be commoditized down to the second or you'll have to close up shop. Now, when all the pieces work together, Hilo is your patient relationship management tool. And from what I can tell, an effective patient relationship is what separates the dreamers from the doctors who are living the dream. In our next episode... As far as Hilo being able to schedule your appointment, dang, that thing rocks. We don't have that huge influx of calls on Monday morning. We're going to hear from some practices that will tell us how they put these tools to work for their office and the impact that this is already having on their patient relationships. And we want to know what you think, too. What keeps your office from building the ideal patient relationship? I'm Adam Salati. 
And thanks for listening to the eClinical Works podcast.